Hello and welcome to the Atoll, your home for Waterworld fandom. In today's mini deep dive, we will be looking at everything we know about the Smoker Refueler Barge. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. In the film, we are first introduced to the Smoker Refueler Barge as the Smoker Army moves into attack position around the Atoll. The introductory shot is one of the most impressive in the film as the camera cranes over the entire hull of the Refueler Barge, finally landing on the Deacon upon his ancient barber chair throne. And in fact, this shot was quite a feat to pull off. A crane on a camera boat was suspended over the deck of the refueler barge as the barge was brought forward and stopped at the precise position for a tight shot on the Deacon. John Murphy, Dean Semler's dolly grip, was disguised as a smoker in the shot and as the camera moved into its final position he reached up and steadied the shot on the Deacon. Also, as a side note, in this introductory shot you can spot another power ski jet board which I did not mention in my initial deep dive on that subject. If you want more information on the defunct power ski jet boards of Waterworld, check out my video on the Kenner Wave Ripper toy. The refueler barge, in reality, was built under the supervision of Mark Urisich on the hull of an old navy landing craft equipped with a 20 by 40 foot bladder which simulated the container used to store thousands of gallons of smoker go juice. The bladder was obtained from a military surplus auction on the island of Oahu. It was made of nylon and then painted by the set designers to look like it was aged and made of patched together rubber. It was pumped full of air to make it look like it was full of fuel. In early concept art, the bladder had been designed to be pulled behind the barge, but it was decided that this did not look as good on camera, so it was moved to the main hall. The Deacon tells his flag boys to give the Hellfire Gunner the quote, key to the city. The boys then start flapping their flags to give the word to the Hellfire Gunner that it was time to open fire on the atoll. Later on in the attack, we can see the Deacon rewarding his flag boys with cigarettes. In this same scene in the book, it divulges some more information about the smoker's cigarette hoard. Quote, Back on the D's, the mothership, he had in his storehouse of spoils many cartons of prehistoric sticks, camels, Marlboros, Chesterfields, all fresh enough to smoke after hundreds of years thanks to their crisp, crackly plastic wrappers. The ancients had been very wise. During the Atoll battle, we can see a smoker jet ski alongside the refueler barge, not having his jet ski fueled up as you might expect, but rather a bladder stuck on his back. This strange little detail is expanded more on in the book, where these specific smokers are called berserkers, naive lads wearing go-juice backpacks unaware that they were actually human bombs. And interestingly, this maniacal detail is actually reproduced in toy version in the Smoker Thunder Ski by Kenner, which I have a whole video about on this channel. After the Trimaran has escaped the walls of the Atoll, the Mariner uses his bow-mounted harpoon gun to snare the Hellfire Gunner boat. The Hellfire Gunner, blinded by soot on his goggles, continues to fire wildly as the boat is turned away from the Atoll and into the path of the Refueler Barge. The Deacon and his smoker compatriots attempt desperately to get the attention of the Hellfire Gunner, whose name might be Chuck, or is it Charles? The bullet shots from the Hellfire Gunner boat that trace across the water and eventually hit the refueler barge were pulled off with a pipe system floating just underneath the water's surface and used forced air and solenoid switches to create the bullet hit effects. Setting and resetting each of the underwater squibs proved extremely time consuming for the crew that was working on the water off of floating production barges. The bullets from the Hellfire Gunner boat connect with the refueler barge as the Deacon leaps from the boat to the protection of the sea. An enormous explosion erupts from the on deck fuel bladder, sending a ball of fire into the blue sky above Waterworld. The Mariner Helen and Enola sail away from the chaos as the Hellfire Gunner realizes the consequences of his trigger happy actions. The explosion itself, according to special effects supervisor Marty Breeson, was quote, a really big effect. They first carefully plotted in schematics exactly where each of the explosives went and how much was needed. In the end, Breeson says this about the explosion, quote, 
we launched about 25 55 gallon barrels into the air and used nearly 700 gallons of gasoline along with a lot of prime accord and sparks. It was a huge explosion. And of course we learned that the deacon's quick actions to abandon ship saves his life but not without taking his left eye. This sets up a personal vengeance towards the mariner that the deacon will carry through the rest of the film. After the battle and the extended cut of the film, the deacon and the ledger take account of the spoils of their conquest and we're given an interesting little tidbit about the gasoline in Waterworld. The ledger tells the deacon that the atoll has quote, zero go juice too, no refining abilities. This line of dialogue leads us to believe that in Waterworld some atolls or other floating civilizations have the ability to refine crude oil. This would of course be extremely valuable to the smokers who literally live on a sea of crude oil but need it to be refined in order to power their motorized armada. It is often pointed out that the smokers could not power their gasoline engines with the crude oil of the Ds, but this small detail does give us some insight into the refining capabilities in Waterworld. Shout out to the Mad Max Minute podcast for bringing this small world building detail to light for me. It is also divulged as the deacon is interrogating the two quote heartbeats that he lost 1000 G's of go juice when the refueler barge exploded. I'm guessing that G's stands for gallons but that seems like a bit of a low number if we are to believe the entire fuel bladder was full of gasoline. For comparison here's an image of a 1000 gallon tank. Later, back at the D's, the deacon is informed by the human death gauge that there is only 4 feet 9 inches of black stuff left, which the ledger tells him is only 3 refuelers of gasoline after refining. I just point this out because I think it's interesting that the smokers use the refueler barge as a unit of measurement and it also makes me wonder if there are multiple refueler barges in the smoker armada. But now let's shift our focus to the extended lore of Waterworld and see if we can find any instances of the smoker refueler barge beyond the film. The novelization of Waterworld surprisingly does not have a lot of details about the refueler barge itself, describing it simply as a quote, oil drum strewn refueler barge with jet skis and small attack boats scurrying back to the refueling barge's goju's berth at the bow. This description, which leaves out any mention of the fuel bladder, makes me wonder if Max Allen Collins based the description of the refueler barge on this alternative piece of concept art which more closely resembles a World War II Higgins landing craft. The book, however, does have some really nice details that add to the Deacon's character as he commands the atoll attack from the refueler barge. One detail points out his obsession with the game of golf where, as the hellfire unleashes on the atoll, he quote, took another practice swing with his spalding, and as if he caused it, another section of the atoll wall powdered under hellfire. In the book, we also get a little bit more insight into his toxic preoccupation with everything gas powered, where he relishes the smell of burning fuel and destruction, and when the deacon sees the trimaran escaping, he exclaims, a man without a motor isn't a man. Pivoting here. Waterworld, a live sea war spectacular, does not have a smoker refueler barge but does have the deacon's fan boat which is sort of a spiritual successor keeping with the tradition of the smoker leader riding into battle aboard a throne. Also another interesting thing to note about the live show is that the atoll has a large round tank filled with fuel which explodes as Helen and the mariner are fleeing the floating city. In the film, the spherical tank aboard the atoll held the society's reserve of hydro, so since the live show is considered a sequel to the film, I guess the atollers did indeed gain the ability to refine their own go juice. Looking at the video games, the refueler is largely absent, though the SNES version has this barge loaded with barrels which may again be an allusion to the alternative concept art for the refueler barge. However, the unreleased on-rail shooter in partial development by Interplay for the 3DO, Jaguar, PlayStation 1, and Mac OS does show us the movie version of the Smoker Refueler Barge in the pre-rendered video published on the 3DO Buffet video game demo disc. 
The Fleer Ultra Waterworld trading cards also show off the refueler barge on two different cards, number 50, Collision Course, and number 146, Refueler. The card titled Refueler also makes reference to the rubber bladders on the backs of the smoker jet skiers. But what happened to the refueler barge after production wrapped on Waterworld? While we have no official information, we can only hope that perhaps it's still working as a barge somewhere in Hawaii, serving out its days, possibly without many even knowing its silver screen legacy. Well, there you have it. That is everything we know about the Smoker Refueler Barge. If you enjoyed this mini deep dive, let me know in the comments below and be sure to give it a thumbs up before you leave. And if you're new to the channel, I would greatly appreciate your subscription. We are still on our journey to 1,000 subscribers and I would love to have you part of this channel's growing success. Also, follow the Atoll on Instagram for even more Waterworld content. Link in the description below. But with that, Thanks, as always, for joining me at The Atoll.